evening, Victory Outreach Church of Las Vegas. We'd like to thank you for being a part of our midweek service. And listen, tonight we're really believing that the Word of God and the presence of God is going to really enrich your life and really touch you in a very special way. So we just pray that your hearts will be open and ready to receive all that God has for your life. Let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, Lord. And God, once again, we just lift up this time of, of, of prayer and worship and even devotion unto you, God. And we just pray that you would speak to our lives, God. And Lord, that you would just do great and mighty things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you here tonight.
Just clap your hands like this. See, oh yeah, oh clap your hands. All ye people and shout unto God. Oh clap your hands, oh clap your hands. All ye Try and with a voice to try and 
Come on, how many thank the Lord that the same power that resurrected Jesus from the grave lives inside of us now. And that means that sin no longer has power over us. Oh, come on, just thank the Lord for a moment this morning.
his greatness tonight. Come on, just declare his greatness tonight. Oh, all over this place. Oh, wherever you find yourself today. He is great. He is mighty. Oh, his grace is sufficient in our weakness. strong when we are weak he is made strong in us See 
Praise the Lord. Why don't you give the Lord a good, good praise? Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, once again, we'd like to welcome you on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Benny and Sister Evelyn, for being a part of our midweek service. And tonight, we're really believing that God's going to do something special. But before we move forward, I have a few announcements for us. Every Monday are all the United Women and Gang Girls in the house. Come on, give your neighbor a high five. I want you to invite them. Begin to share the link. We're going to be, the women of God are going to be having their crown discipleship classes. That's going to be every Monday night. And once again, like I said, you can share it. You can like it through our Zoom, our Zoom meetings. And then also throughout the week, what we have is our life groups. We want you to get connected because there are so many life groups that we have just launched out. And if you're not in a life group yet, we want you to be a part of that as well as our, our watch parties. Listen, we've been hosting our, our church services in specific watch parties, and we want you to be connected through that as well. And then every Friday, we have our God's Anointed Now Generation. The gang is on the move, and God is doing something special there. And we want you to stay plugged in and, and stay connected as well. And then this Sunday, we have something very, very special. We're going to be having our very own founder, Pastor Sonny Argonzoni, is going to be coming and sharing with us on our Father's Day service. And we just want you to invite all the fathers, invite everybody. It's going to be a great time, but especially now as we're celebrating our, our Father's Day and also we'll be having our very own pastor, Pastor Benny, will be coming and sharing with us as well. At this time, let's go ahead and transition as we get ready to receive our tithes and our offering. Go ahead and prepare yourself here tonight and and as you're doing so, you're able to you're able to give through our our, our app or also through our, our PO box as well as online. And tonight I really want to encourage us, you know, to be consistent in our giving. If you're not a, a recurring giver, listen, now's the time. As well as our united we can. Listen, we're able to make a global difference simply through our giving. As I was preparing here tonight, I, I began to think about the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I believe verse 11. And the word of God, it, it talks about us being enriched, you know, and I know that's something that, you know, we don't go without, you know. We all have something that God has given to us. Now, what we do with our finances really is what really matters. What are our priorities? Along with that scripture, it also talks about, you know, uh, giving back and being generous. And we want to be a generous people with what God has given to us. Yes, God has given us and He's enriched our life, but we also want to be able to give back in, in a generous way. And then later on in that scripture, it also talks about how others will begin to thank God. To thank God for our generous giving. And I don't know about you, but I remember me thanking God because of somebody else's faithfulness. And we want you to continue to be faithful in this area of giving. Amen. So right there, as we begin to pray, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us as we get ready for the word here tonight as well. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, Lord. And God, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to sow seed. And we ask, God, that you bless these finances and that you would use them for the furtherance of your gospel. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you as you give here tonight. God's people are not going to go back the same. And then God says, where well, you said you could not do it, that's the place that I have called you because you're not going to do it, but I'm going to be doing it through you. There are thousands and thousands of people that have been touched, that have come through the home, that have come to our churches. Not only do we have a local vision, but God is going to send you out, and He's going to send you out, and He's going to send you out, and He's raising us up, and many of you are going to be pastors, you're going to be evangelists. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. This October, we're coming together, preparing for one purpose, a United We Can effort, Run for Hope, in 12 different locations. Run for Hope is more than just a 10K or 5K run. It's a movement 
fueled by passion, courage, hope, faith, and inspiration. Join us for this year's Run for Hope of Unstoppable Help. Register today at runforhope.victoryoutreach.org. We are in it to make a change. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing here tonight? Thank you guys for being online. Amen. Hopefully everybody's safe and good health right there in your homes. Um, it's been a weird six months, amen, but, you know, our prayers are that things are going to get better. Tonight, I'm going to, you know, first of all, I want to thank God for my salvation. Uh, my name is Brother Jaime. I'm going to take this time, amen, to uh, just open up in a word of prayer, you know, but I really um, want to pray for, for all of you there viewing um, that the peace of God would continue to remain in your hearts Amen. In the midst of uh, what's taking place in our lives, amen. Um, you know, and, and things don't seem to be getting better, amen. But we can always put our trust in the Lord that our God will get us through this season that we're encountering, amen. So, right there where you're at, you can bow your heads. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, and we thank you that. We are able to be reminded tonight, my God, that you are a good God and that you are with us and that you continue to get us through the seasons of life, my God. That even though the seasons change, like this song says, my God, your love never changes, Lord. And we can call upon you, Lord, call upon that love that you have for us, Lord, and know that you will see us through whatever we're going through, my God. Tonight, I pray for this message, Lord. I pray that you would speak, my God, to the hearer, my God, that you would cause faith to rise up, that you would cause, my God, your word, Father God, that you would cause, Father God, a fire to be stirred up within our lives, my God, to be reminded, my God, of who we are in you, my God, that you called us to do great things and that no disaster, that no pandemic, that no virus is going to detour your people from fulfilling that purpose that you have for their lives, my God. I thank you tonight, and I just pray that you would just take over, my God, and speak, my God, through your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you, we love you, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Praise the Lord. So once again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, amen. You know, the work of God doesn't stop, amen. We continue to move, we continue to do what we have to do, amen, to get the gospel through. Amen. And tonight I want to share with us here, um, you know, I'm not going to keep you long. Amen. It's a Wednesday night. Praise the Lord. It's a midweek service. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded when we used to come and uh, just worship. Amen. We had our worship service. Powerful. Amen. But we can experience that in our homes. Amen. Because God is not limited to a building. Amen. So I encourage you, you know, to, you know, get your family, you know, get whoever comes over and, 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 and worship God right there in your home. Invite the presence of God and allow that same experience that we were having in our church building to take place in your homes, amen. Because like I said, God is not limited to a building, amen. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, amen. We are the temple of God. And tonight I want to speak to us, and the title of my message is, What is My Purpose? Amen. What is my purpose? Amen. What is my purpose and what was I created for? Why am I here on earth? Amen. We ask questions, amen, throughout life, you know, and sometimes it seems like there's no answer to those questions. Sometimes it seems like life is just what it is, and, and, and sometimes we just want to roll with what comes our way. Amen. But I want to remind you here tonight, amen. That, there, that there's a purpose for your life. That God has not, that there is not only a, a purpose, but it's a great purpose that God has for your life. I believe that with everything that has taken place and is taking place in this world, in this country, and even in our homes, we can begin to really lose sight of our God given purpose in our lives. Amen. We can begin to look at the world and look at the circumstances and begin to say, well, you know, where is this world going? What's taking place? And, you know, and we can lose track of what God has called us to do. 
How many know th th that circumstances might change, things might change within our lives, within our situation, but the purpose that God has for our lives does not change. And that is what I want to talk about here tonight, about pursuing our God-given purpose. And no matter what comes our way, and we don't know when this is going to end, amen? We don't know, uh, you know, 2020 was going to be a great year, amen? In 2019, we expected 2020 to be a, a year of harvest, a year of a uh, lot of things, you know, church growing, business growing, things were going to take place, but we find ourselves here six months later still dealing with the buyers and even with the craziness around the world, amen, with the riots and everything that's taking place, amen. But I want to just remind you here tonight to stay focused upon your purpose, amen. I want to share with us here some things, you know, as I was thinking about this message, I began to think, you know, what's going on? What, what's taking place? What's happening in 2020? And as I began to look, you know, yes, we know we're dealing with the coronavirus, amen? That's here, you know, and, and it's all over the world, you know, but when you look at the news in El Salvador, you have mudslides taking place, you know, and in the Congo, they, they actually, you know, had an emergency, uh, declared a state of emergency because they're, they're having, they had an Ebola breakout in 2018 and they've been monitoring it and now they finally declared an emergency on it. Amen? You know, in, uh, you have a cyclone, amen, that took place in June 7th. Amen? Uh, actually, it was in May. And it, it was a cyclone that broke records in the world, in history. You know, here in the U.S., we have the protests. We have everything that's taking place. Amen? You know, and, and, and you look at the chaos that's going on in the United States with, with the riots and the protests. And can you imagine... You know, they're protesting against law enforcement, the police department. You know, can you imagine what it would be without, what this world would be without police department? If it's crazy right now, can you imagine what it would be without law enforcement in order? Amen. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5 reads like this, and it says, You should know this, Timothy that in the last days there will be very difficult times for people. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will, boast, they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving, unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. And when we look and when we turn on the news, we can see that this scripture is in front of our eyes as being, you know, it doesn't take a genius to see that this is what's taking place within our world, that the world is out of control. Amen. Not to mention, you know, the tornadoes that are taking place, you know, the humanitarian crisis at the uh, southern border. Amen. The dam bridges that, that took place in, in Midland, Michigan. You know, this world seems to be spinning out of control. Amen. And when we look, this can cause us to lose sight of our calling. This can cause us to lose sight of the purpose that God has for our lives. Amen. And when we look at it, you can say that um, we might have all the right to walk away and say, you know what, I'm going to walk away and I'm just going to do my own thing. The world is out of control. Where's God in all this? And I believe we, you know, within ourselves, we can say that that's, we would be right in doing that. Amen. But 
you know, that, that is not the right thing for a Christian that has been saved, that has been uh, washed in the blood of, you know, that God touched your life. You know, it, there is nowhere in life, you know, when God has touched our lives for us to turn and say, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to live life this way. There's no reason for that. And that's what I want to talk to us about tonight. I want to encourage us because I believe that what we're going through can really cause somebody to gear off track and begin to look to other things and begin to forget of their God-given purpose. Amen. So I want to encourage us tonight to stay focused. Amen. You know, and I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul. You know, when you think about going through heartache, going through hardship, going through things in life that you cannot understand, and, you know, and I believe it gives you all the right to say, where is God in all this? You know what? I'm done. I'm going to give up. I'm going to do my own thing. But when you look at the Apostle Paul, what, what was it that kept him pushing forward? What was it that kept him Knowing, you know what, God's got a plan for my life. I'm going to endure to what I got. I'm going to continue to move forward. What was it that kept him moving forward? Amen. Second Corinthians eleven twenty six 26 through 28 reads like this. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced, faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts. And on the seas, and I have faced dangers from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and, and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often, often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to take me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. The apostle went through some serious stuff. Amen. In his walk with God. I believe that everything that went that he went through, you know, he had the right to just walk away. I mean, where's God in all this? Amen. You can say, where's God in the midst of what, what he was going through, in the midst of the chaos? Amen. See, and we have to be reminded that God does not change. That seasons, circumstances might change in the world or in our lives, but God remains the same. Amen. What about you and me? Amen. We can just, you know, do the same thing. Amen. We had, you know, we cannot forget, amen, the days or the days of desperation, of hopelessness, the days when we wanted to end our own lives because of the destruction that we had allowed to take control of our, of our lives for many years. Amen. And I believe it was, it was that Damascus experience that the Apostle Paul encountered that caused him to continue to move forward. It was that, you know, I believe that that reminded him of who God was. Amen. Because he had seal for other things. And when God touched his life, amen, he said, you know what? I'm going to continue to do what God has called me to do. And the same thing with us. Amen. We cannot forget where God has brought us from. It doesn't matter where we're at today, but we have to remember that God touched our lives, that God put a calling upon our lives, that God set us free. We have to remember that day when we were there in, in, in desperateness, lost, without hope, without direction in life, ready to take our lives. But God came in and he touched our lives. And that's what has to be our drive. Amen. That has to be our drive, reminding ourselves that, you know what? He touched my life back then because he had a purpose for me today. Amen. Philippians 3, 12, 14 says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess, to possess the perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. 
Amen. We have to have a determined mind to fulfill our God-given purpose. Can I get an amen right there where you're at? We have to have a determination in our lives that no matter what comes our way, no matter what we're facing, when we're looking unto God, that God is going to be able to get us through whatever we're going through. Amen. If it's marriage problems, if it's uh, whatever you're going through, we can look unto our God and say, you know what? My God's gotten me through this before, and he's going to get me through this today. Amen. There's a quote from J David Jeremiah, and it says like this, a man, or you can say woman too, in the will of God is immortal, is immortal until his work is done. Amen. In other words, as long as we are in the will of God, we can continue to move forward with, with our lives. We can continue to know that God is going to keep us. Amen. When you hear the testimonies of our pastors where they've been ran over, shot, stabbed, all this stuff they've been through, but they're still here, amen, preaching the word of, of God. Amen. God is not done with them, and God is not done with you. Amen. God, when, when God is done with you, man of God, he will take you home. And you can rest on that, that, that once God is done, he's going to take you home. Amen. But meanwhile, while we have breath in our lives, while we're, you know, we need to continue to stay focused upon the calling and the purpose of God upon our lives. Amen. And understanding that he has a purpose for our lives. Psalms 139, 16 reads like this. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Amen. And I want to, you know, the rest of this time, I want to share on understanding your purpose. Amen. What is your purpose on earth? And what are you created to accomplish? Amen. Someone once said that there are two great days in life, the day you're born and the day you discover your purpose. Amen. And many of us, you know, we, we've gone through life and we're still searching for that purpose. Well, let me tell you right now that God's got a purpose for your life, that your purpose was written in the book of life before you were even born. Amen. So if you're looking, look no more. Your purpose is found in God. Amen. And that is the only place that your purpose is found. Why? Because he is your creator. He is your maker. He is the one that created you before you even in your mother's womb. Amen. Undiscovered purpose is a lack of identity. Amen. We see many people that are lost and they don't know what, what they are or who they are or where they came from. They're lost because they don't, they haven't discovered their purpose. Amen. And our purpose, like I said, and our identity is only found in God. It is dangerous. Amen. When, you, we don't, when we don't have, when we don't understand our purpose, it's a dangerous place to be. Why? Because it devalues you. Amen. I'm going to share an illustration um, to give us a little bit more understanding what, what, you know, it devalues us. When we don't understand who we are, amen, we, we let anybody or anything, you know, we, we get treated like, but when we understand our true purpose, when we understand who we are in God, we're able to walk. Amen. With our head held up, knowing that, that we have a purpose in God, that he is our heavenly father. Amen. I'm going to share this illustration with us here tonight. It says, a father said to his son, you graduated with honors. Here's a car that I acquired many years ago. It is several years old. But before I give it to you, take it to the used car lot downtown and tell them I want to sell it and see how much they offer you. The son went to the used car lot, returned to his father, and said, they offered me a thousand because it looks very worn out. The father told him, take it to the pawn shop. The son went to the pawn shop, returned to his father, and said, the pawn shop offered me a hundred dollars because it looks very, it, because it was a very old car. The father asked his son, go to the car club, and show them the car. The son took the car to the car club, returned, and told his father, some people in the club offered me $100,000 for it since it's a Nissan. I mean, it's an iconic car, thought after by many. 
The father said to his son, I wanted you to know the right place. I wanted you to know what the right place values you the right way. Amen. And, that, and that's what we need to understand about ourselves. Amen. That, that when we, we look for value for ourselves, you know, we live our lives chasing this, chasing the other, you know, trying to fit into to different areas of life, trying to be somebody that we weren't created to be. We don't get the value that only the Word of God gives us. Amen. Only in the Word of God and only fulfilling the purpose of God for our lives is working up. Where we're going to find true fulfillment. Amen. We're going to find who we really are and we're going to find our value. Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Undiscovered purpose gives you lack of energy. Amen. You have to understand that when we don't know what we were created to do, we, we're just, you know, doing, doing with no direction. Amen. Purpose gives you vision. Amen. When you have purpose in your life, when you, when you have understanding, when, when God speaks to you, when God tells you, you know, you have, it gives you a vision. You want to do things. You, you begin to see things. You begin to picture yourself doing things for the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what purpose does in our lives. See, anything that you do for the kingdom of God is something great, whether it's small, but in the kingdom of God, it's a great thing. Amen. The current, the current world population is 7.8 billion as of June 2020, according to the most recent United Nations estimates. Amen. Out of the 7.8 billion people that exist, no one human being on earth is a mistake. We were sent here to do something valuable. That means that God had something that needed to be done that made you necessary. God created nothing for entertainment, even for beauty, but he created all things with a purpose. Amen. When we look at the animal kingdom, amen, we can see how even the smallest creatures have a purpose in this earth. Amen. That God created. That even the smallest things, how much more us that were given dominion over every creature. Amen. How much more purpose don't we have? Amen. Genesis 1.26 reads like this. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Amen. Psalms 8, 6, 6 and 8 reads like this. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. Amen. See, my point with this is we have to understand who we are in Christ. Amen. He gave us dominion over everything, over the livestock, over everything. Amen. That's who we are in Christ. That is our purpose on this earth. We were created to fulfill something, to do something great for God. And no matter what place you're in in life today, I'm here to remind you that you have a purpose. Amen. Most of us don't know our purpose on earth. Amen. We don't know why we were created or why we even exist. We live our lives chasing after dreams, chasing after women, chasing after materialism, chasing careers, chasing things that at the end of life will only leave you empty and with regret, right? Amen. Many of us have been there chasing things, amen, that at the end we find ourselves empty, lonely, disappointed, amen. It is only when you fulfill the purpose for your life that you're able to have that peace, amen. Proverbs 19.21 reads like this, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Amen. Prevail meaning that God's plan hunts you. Let me say that again. God's plan and his purpose will haunt you for the rest of your life. Amen. We can run after careers. We can run after success. Amen. 
But at the end of life, we will never be fulfilled only when we accomplish the purpose of God upon our lives. Praise the Lord. I want to say to you that there is nothing more tragic than living on this earth. Amen. 80, 90 years, 70 years, and not knowing what your purpose is in life. Without a purpose, life has no meaning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 1, 5 reads like this. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as prophets to the nations. Amen. One thing we need to, one thing we need to know tonight is that our purpose, my purpose, your destiny was chosen by God, but its fulfillment is decided by you. Amen. And we have to decide to choose our purpose, to choose God's purpose for our lives. See, life is, someone quoted this, life is a series of choices. We make choices every day. Some decisions have far-reaching consequences and other decisions are not so far-reaching, but our choices determine the character, direction, destiny, and eternity of our God give of of our life, God has given us the power of choice, and He has given us the will. In our will, He will not touch. I mean, no matter how bad things are, you have a choice. No matter what you think you can or cannot do, you have a choice. Amen. George Eliot said this: "The strongest principle of growth lies in human choice." Amen. Praise the Lord. Joshua 24, 15 reads like this. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, you choose this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we're given choices in life. Amen. We're given choices in life to serve God, or not to serve God, to do good or not to do good. Life is full of choices, amen? And for us to fulfill our, our purpose, church, men, women of God, you know, it's going to be by allowing the Word of God, by getting into the Word of God and finding our purpose in the Word, because that's who created us. That's who gives us our purpose. It's God, and it's only in the Word of God that we're going to find true fulfillment. The writer of Proverbs over and over warns us about depending upon, upon man's wisdom rather than seeking God's wisdom when making decisions. Amen. Proverbs 28, 26 says, He who trusts in himself is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom is kept safe. Your life isn't an accident. Amen. You have a destiny one that only you can complete. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as I close here tonight, amen, I just want to remind you, church, of your purpose. You know, like I said, we're, we're experiencing some hard times in life. You know, to some, it might not be as hard. But the reality of it is that there's chaos in this world. There's you know, divorces that are taking place, there's death, there's sickness, there's, you know, natural disasters. Amen. But let's not forget that God still has a purpose for our life, that as long as we have breath in our lives, we need to have the attitude of the Apostle Paul. We need to have that attitude that, you know what, that God touched my life, that God set me free, that God delivered me from drug addiction, from gang violence, whatever it was that God got you through, be reminded of that today. Be reminded that God set you apart, that he cleaned you up because he's got a purpose for your life. And it is a time where we need to be that light in this dark world. It is a time where we need to uh, uh, allow our light to shine, allow God to use our lives to reach those that also have a purpose but haven't found it because they've been lost out there in the world and caught up in, in everything that the world has to offer. Amen? And in closing here tonight, it is your decision and not your position that determine 
your destiny. Jesus said, anyone who is with me opposed Anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me in Matthew 12, 30. If you do not crown Jesus, you crucify him. There is no middle ground. Amen. We have to make the decision to follow God if we are going to fulfill our God-given purpose. Amen. And I just want to encourage you guys tonight, encourage the church, encourage you know, the life groups, the Bible studies that are taking place, everything that we are doing to give it your all. Amen. If there was a time to, to really put your mind and, 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 and be determined on something, it is today. It is today because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We don't know where tomorrow, where we'll be. Amen. We pray that, that we're over this thing and that life gets back to normal. But we also have to look at what we've gone through and what we've been through and let it change the way we live our lives as Christian men and women. Amen. Understanding that we were created to reach. Amen. Go and make disciples of all the nations. Amen. But we start in our homes. We start with our children. We start with our family. Amen. We start with those around us. Amen. So I just want to encourage you tonight, you know, to continue to stay focused, to continue to don't lose hope. Whatever your situation you're in, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, do not lose hope. Know that God is going to get you through it, that these dark times are going to be just a memory in our lives one day. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray out tonight. Thank you guys for viewing online. Amen. For those that are tuning in, if you're not, you can catch it at a later time. Amen. Um, I'm going to close off in a word of prayer. Like I said, I just want to encourage you. Amen. Do not lose focus of the purpose for your life. Do not let the enemy lie to you. Do not let the enemy come in and distract you. Stay focused. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me pray out here tonight. Heavenly Father God, I thank you tonight, Lord, for your word, Lord, for your reminder, Lord, that in the midst of chaos, in the midst of what's taking place within the world, our purpose remains in you, my God. And I just pray for the viewers, my God. I pray those that are hearing this message that they would be reminded, my God, that you have a purpose, my God. I pray that you touch them, that you fill them anew here tonight, my God, that you would just let your peace be upon them and, and, and remind them, my God, of the day that you touched their lives, the day that they cried out, my God, that they were in, in, in despair, that they were there in the midst of taking their own life, my God, and you came down and you touched their lives, my God. Let there be, let that be a stepping stone within our lives, my God, to be reminded of that, like the Apostle Paul, my God. He was reminded, I believe that that's what kept them, my God kept them going forward, my God, because he had an encounter with you, Lord. And I pray that you would remind us, my God, of that day in our lives, my God, in these times, Lord, that we would not allow the enemy to come in and, and steal, my God, yes, Lord, your purpose, your calling from our lives, but that we would stay focused on the mission that you've given us, Father God, through this great ministry of victory outreach, my God, that we would continue to reach the world my god that we will continue to minister your gospel my god and we will continue to separate ourselves my god unto you and allow you to use our lives lord in these last days lord we thank you lord we love you lord in the name of jesus christ amen praise the lord god bless everyone amen um stay tuned in to the life groups amen it's vital for our church right now you know Push those life groups, invite people, you know. Uh, use your evangelistic tools right now, amen, to, to get those life groups flowing, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great night. Praise the Lord, amen. And there's nothing like being able to be enriched and refreshed with the Word of God and, and even there inside of our houses as we're practicing the presence of God. And we like to thank you for your consistency and your faithfulness as you're staying in contact and, and in tune with us throughout our all of our social network platforms and we just pray that you continue to be connected and invite somebody share it like it and subscribe to our youtube channel as well as facebook and instagram and we just want to say thank you and that we love you and we'll see you this sunday god bless you